I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulet's abroad, and if we meet, we shall not scape a brawl. For now these hot days is the mad blood stirring. Thou art like one of these fellows that, when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me his sword upon the table and says, God send me no need of thee and by the operation of the second cup, draws him on the drawer, when indeed there is no need. Am I like such a fellow? Come, come, thou art as hot a jack in thy mood as any in Italy, and as soon moved to be moody, and as soon moody to be moved. And what two? Nay, and there were two such, we should have none shortly, for one would kill the other. Thou! Why, thou wilt quarrel with a man that hath a hair more or a hair less in his beard than thou hast. Thou wilt quarrel with a man for cracking nuts, having no other reason but because thou hast hazel eyes. What eye but such an eye would spy out such a quarrel? Thy head is as full of quarrels as an egg is full of meat, and yet thy head hath been beaten as addle as an egg for quarreling. Thou hast quarreled with a man for coughing in the street because he hath wakened thy dog that hath lain asleep in the sun. Didst thou not fall out with a tailor for wearing his new doublet before Easter, hmm? with another for tying his new shoes with an old ribbon, and yet thou wilt tutor me from quarreling. And I were so apt to quarrel as thou art. Any man should buy the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. <laughs> the fee simple? Oh, simple. By my head, here comes the Capulets. By my heel, I care not. Follow me close, for I will speak to them. Gentlemen, good den. A word with one of you. And but one word with one of us? Couple it with something, make it a word and a blow. You shall find me apt enough to that, sir, and you will give me occasion. Could you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consortest with Romeo. Consort? What dost thou make us minstrels? And thou make minstrels of us look to hear nothing but discords. Here's my fiddlestick. Here's that shall make you dance. Zones, consort. We talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw unto some private place and reason coldly of your grievances or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. But I'll be hanged, sir, if he wear your livery. Mary, go before to feel, and he'll be your follower. Your worship in that sense may call him man. Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none, therefore farewell, I see thou know'st me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries thou hast done me, therefore turn and draw. I do protest, I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so, good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. Oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission, Alla staccata carries it away, Tybalt. You rat catcher, will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives, that I mean to make bold with all, and as you shall use me hereafter, dry beat the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your sword out of his pitcher by the ears? Make haste, lest mine be about your ears ere it be out. I am for you. Gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier up. Come, sir, your passado. <laughs> Gra Benvolio, <laughs> beat down their weapons. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> <a> shame, forbear <laughs> this outrage. <laughs> Mercutio, the prince expressly <laughs> forbid this banding in Verona's <laughs> streets. Hold, <laughs> Tybalt, good <laughs> Mercutio. <laughs> 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 I am hurt. A plague of both your houses. I am sped. Is he gone? And hath nothing? What? Art thou hurt? I, I a scratch, sir, a scratch. Mary does enough. Where is my page? Go, villain. Fetch a surgeon. Courage, man. The hurt cannot be much. No, tis not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but... Go, sir... Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. <coughs> I am peppered, I warrant, for this world. Yeah, plague of both your houses. Zones, a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat to scratch a man to death. A braggart, a rogue, a villain that fights by the book of arithmetic. 
Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. I thought all for the best. <sighs> Help me into some house, Benvolio, or I shall faint. A plague of both your houses. <coughs> they have meat, worms, meat of me. I have it, and soundly too. Your houses. This gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend hath got his mortal hurt in my behalf, my reputation stained with Tybalt's slander, Tybalt that an hour hath been my kinsman. O oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor's steel. O oh, Romeo, Romeo, brave Mercutio is dead. That gallant spirit hath aspired the clouds, which too untimely here did scorn the earth. This day's black fate on more days doth depend. This but begins the woe, others must end. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Alive in triumph, and Mercutio slain? Away to heaven, respective lenity, and fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again that late thou gavest me. For Mercutio's soul is but little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company, and either thou or I or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy that didst consort him here shall with him hence. This shall determine that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 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 <sighs> Romeo away, be gone. The citizens are up, and Tybalt slain. Stand not amazed, the prince will doom thee death if thou art taken. Hence, be gone, away. Oh, I am fortune's fool. Why dost thou stay? Which way ran he that killed Mercutio? Tybalt, that murderer, which way ran he? There lies that Tybalt. Up, sir, go with me. I charge thee in the prince's name, obey. Where are the vile beginners of this fray? O noble prince, I can discover all the unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man, slain by young Romeo that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Tybalt, my cousin. Oh, my brother's child. Oh, prince! Oh, husband! Oh, the blood is spilled of my dear kinsman. Princess, thou art true, for blood of ours shed blood of Montague. Oh, cousin, cousin! Benvolio, who began this bloody fray? <laughs> Tybalt here slain, whom Romeo's hand did slay, Romeo, that spoke him fair. Bid him bethink how nice the quarrel was, and urged with all your high displeasure. All this uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, could not take truce with the unruly spleen of Tybalt, deaf to peace, but that he tilts with piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast, who, all as hot, turns deadly point to point, and with a martial scorn, with one hand beats cold death aside, and with the other sends it back to Tybalt, whose dexterity retorts it. Romeo, he cries aloud, hold, friends, friends, part! And swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their fatal points, and twixt them rushes underneath whose arm an envious thrust from Tybalt hits the life of stout Mercutio! And then Tybalt fled! But by and by comes back to Romeo, who had but newly entertained revenge, and to it they go like lightning for air. I could draw to part them with stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly? This is the truth, or let Benvolio die. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in this black strife, and all those twenty could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio, who now the price of his dear blood doth owe. Not Romeo, prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end, the life of Tybalt. And for that offense, immediately we do exile him hence. I have an interest in your hate's proceeding. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a-bleeding. But I'll immerse you with so strong a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses, nor tears nor prayers shall purchase out abuses. 
therefore use none. Let Romeo hence in haste, else when he is found that hour is his last. Bear hence this body and attend our will. Mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill. Gallop apace, you fiery-footed steeds, towards Phoebus' lodging. Such a wagoner as Phaeton would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love-performing night, that rude eyes may wink and Romeo leap to these arms, untalked of and unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauties, or, if love be blind, it best agrees with night. Come, civil knight! Thou sober-suited matron all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. Hood my unmanned blood baiting in my cheeks with thy black mantle, till strange love, grown bold, think true love acted simple modesty. Come, knight, come, Romeo, come, thou day and night, for thou wilt lie upon the wings of night, whiter than new snow upon a raven's back. Come, gentle knight, come, loving black-browed knight, give me my Romeo, and when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of a love, but not possessed it. And, though I am sold, not yet enjoyed, so tedious is this day, as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. Oh, here comes my nurse, and she brings news, and every tongue that speaks but Romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence. Now, nurse, what news? What hast thou there? The cords that Romeo bid thee fetch? Ay, ay, the cords. Ah, oh, me, what news? Why dost thou wring thy hands? Oh, well, a day he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. We are undone, lady, we are undone. Alack, the day he's gone. He's killed. He's dead. Can heaven be so envious? Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, who ever would have thought it? Romeo! What devil art thou that dost torment me thus? This torture should be roared in dismal hell. Hath Romeo slain himself? Say thou but I, and that bare vowel I shall poison more than the death-darting eye of cockatrice. I am not I, if there be such an eye, or those eyes shut that make thee answer I. If he be slain, say I, or if not, no. Brief sounds determine of my weal or woe. I saw the wound. I saw it with mine eyes. God save the mark. Here on his manly breast, a piteous course, a bloody piteous course, pale, pale as ashes, all bedaubed in blood, all in gore blood. I swooned at the sight. Oh, break my heart. Poor bank route, break at once. To prison eyes, ne'er look on liberty. Vile earth to earth resign, end motion here. And thou and Romeo press one heavy beat. Oh, Tybalt, Tybalt, the best friend I had, oh, courteous Tybalt, honest gentleman, that ever I should live to see thee dead. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered, and is Tybalt dead? My dear loved cousin and my dearer lord, then dreadful trumpets sound the general doom, for who is living if those two are gone? Tybalt is gone. And Romeo banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. Oh, God, did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? It did, it did, alas, the day it did. Oh, serpent heart hid with a flowering face. Did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant, fiend angelical, dove-feathered raven, wolvish ravening lamb, despised substance of divinest show, just opposite to what thou justly seemst a damned saint and honorable villain. Oh, nature, what hast thou to do in hell when thou didst bower the spirit of a fiend in mortal paradise of such sweet flesh? Was ever book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Oh, that deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous palace. 
There's no trust, no faith, no honesty in men. All perjured, all forsworn, all not all dissemblers. Oh, where's my man? Give me some aqua vitae. These griefs, these woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Blistered be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his brow shame is a shame to sit. For tis a throne where honor may be crowned, sole monarch of the universal earth. Oh, what a beast was I to chide at him. Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? <laughs> Poor my lord. What tongue shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours wife, have mangled it? But wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? That villain cousin would have killed my husband. Back, foolish tears. Back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe, which you mistaking offer up to joy. My husband lives that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband. Oh, this is comfort. Wherefore weep I then? Some word there was. Worser than Tybalt's death that murdered me. I would forget it fain. But, oh, it presses to my memory like damned guilty deeds to sinners' minds. Tybalt is dead and Romeo banished. That banished. That one word banished hath slain ten thousand Tybalt's. Tybalt's death was woe enough if it had ended there, or if sour woe delights in fellowship and needly will be ranked with other griefs. Why followed not when she said Tybalt's dead thy father, or thy mother, nay, or both, which modern lamentation might have moved? But with a rare word following Tybalt's death, Romeo is banished. To speak that word, his father... Mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain, all dead. Romeo was banished. There is no end, no limit, measure, bound. In that word's death, no words can that woe sound. Where is my father and my mother nursed? Weeping and wailing over Tybalt's course. Will you go to them? I will bring you thither. Wash they his wounds with tears. Mine shall be spent when theirs are dry for Romeo's banishment. Take up those cords. Poor ropes, you are beguiled, both you and I, for Romeo is exiled. He made you for a highway to my bed, but I, a maid, die maiden widowed. Come, cords. Come, nurse. All to my wedding bed, and death, not Romeo, take my maiden head. Hie to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I wot well where he is. Hark ye, your Romeo will be here at night. I'll to him. He is hid at Lauren's cell. Oh, find him. Give this ring to my true knight and bid him come to take his last farewell. Romeo, come forth. Come forth, thou fearful man. Affliction is enamoured of thy parts and thou art wedded to calamity. Father, what news? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves a quince at my hand that I yet know not? Too familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. What less than doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Ha! Huh. Banishment? Be merciful, say death, for exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Do not say banishment. Hence from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. Hence banish it is banished from the world, and world's exile is death. Then banish it is death mistermed. Calling death banishment, thou cutst my head off with a golden axe, and smilest upon the stroke that murders me. O oh, deadly sin, O oh, rude unthankfulness, thy fault our law calls death. But the kind prince, taking thy part, hath brushed aside the law, and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. Tis torture, and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing, live here in heaven and may look on her. But Romeo may not. 
more validity, more honorable state, more courtship lives in carrion flies than Romeo. They may seize on the white wonder of dear Juliet's hand and steal a mortal blessing from her lips. Who, even in pure and vestal modesty, still blush as thinking their own kisses sin? But Romeo may not. He is banished. This may flies do when I from this must fly. And sayst thou yet that exile is not death? Hast thou no poison mixed, no sharp ground knife, no sudden mean of death, thou ne'er so mean? But banished to kill me. Banished. O oh, friar, the damned use that word in hell. Howlings attend it. How hast thou the heart, being a divine, a ghostly confessor, a sin absolver, and my friend professed to mangle me with that word banishment? Thou fond madman, hear me speak a little. Oh, thou wilt speak again of banishment. I'll give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet milk philosophy, to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Yet banished, hang up philosophy, unless philosophy can make a Juliet, displant a town, reverse a prince's doom, it helps not, it prevails not. Talk no more. Oh, then I see that madmen have no ears. How should they when that wise men have no eyes? Let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not speak of what thou dost not feel. What thou as young as I, Juliet thy love, an hour but married, Tybalt murdered, doting like me and like me banished. Then mightst thou speak. Then mightst thou tear thy hair and fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. Arise, one knocks. Good Romeo, hide thyself. Not I. Unless the breath of heart-sick groans mist-like enfold me from the search of eyes. Hark how they knock. Who's there? Romeo, arise. Thou wilt be taken. Stay a while. Stand up. Run to my study. By and by. God's will, what simpleness is this? I come, I come. Who knocks so hard? Whence come you? What's your will? Let me come in and you shall know my errand. I come from Lady Juliet. Oh, welcome then. Oh, holy friar, oh, tell me, holy friar, where is my lady's lord? Where's Romeo? There on the ground, with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he is even in my mistress' case, just in her case. Oh, woeful sympathy, piteous predicament. Even so lies she, blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up, stand up. Stand, and you be a man, for Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an O? Nurse. Oh, sir, oh, sir. Well, death's the end of all. Spakest thou of Juliet? How is it with her? Doth not she think me an old murderer, now I have stained the childhood of our joy, with blood removed but little from her own? Where is she, and how doth she, and what says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and now falls on her bed, and then starts up, and Tybalt calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. As if that name shot from the deadly level of a gun did murder her, as that name's cursed hand murdered her kinsman. Oh, tell me, friar, tell me, in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge? Tell me! that I may sack the hateful mansion. Hold thy desperate hand. Art thou a man? Thy form cries out thou art. Thy tears are womanish. Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast, unseemly woman in a seeming man, or ill-beseeming beast in seeming both. Thou hast amazed me. By my holy order I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Wilt thou slay thyself, and slay thy lady too that lives in thee by doing damned hate upon thyself? Why railst thou on thy birth, the heaven and earth, since birth and heaven and earth all three do meet in thee at once, which thou at once wouldst lose? Fie, fie, thou shamest thy shape, thy love, thy wit, which, like a usurer, abounst in all, and usest none in that true use indeed which should bedeck thy shape, thy love, thy wit. Thy noble shape is but a form of wax, digressing from the valor of a man. Thy dear love sworn, but hollow perjury, killing that love which thou hast vowed to cherish. Thy wit, that ornament to shape and love, misshapen in the conduct of them both, like powder in a skillless soldier's flask, is set afire by thine own ignorance, and thou dismembered with thine own defense. What? Rouse thee, man! Thy Juliet is alive, for whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead. There art thou happy. Tybalt would kill thee. But thou slewest Tybalt, there art thou happy too. The law that threatened death becomes thy friend, and turns it to exile, there art thou happy. 
A pack of blessings lights upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in her best array. But, like a misbehaved and sullen wench, thou pout'st upon thy fortune and thy love. Take heed, take heed, for such die miserable. Go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed. Ascend her chamber, hence, and comfort her. But, look, thou stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentst forth in lamentation. Go before, nurse, commend me to thy lady, and bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow makes them apt unto. Romeo is coming. Oh, Lord, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is. My Lord, I'll tell my lady you will come. Do so, and bid my sweet prepare to chide. Here, sir, a ring she bid me give you, sir. How you make haste, for it grows very late. How well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence, good night, and here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set, or by the break of day disguised from hence. Sojourn in Mantua. I'll find out your man, and he shall signify from time to time every good hap to you that chances here. Give me thy hand. Tis late. Farewell. Good night. But that a joy past joy calls out on me, it were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Things have fallen out, sir, so unluckily that we've had no time to move our daughter. Look you, she loved her kinsman Tibble dearly, and so did I. Well, we were born to die. It is very late. She'll not come down tonight. I promise you, but for your company, I would have been abed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no time to woo. Madam, good night. Commend me to your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she's mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me. Nay more, I doubt it not. Wife, go you to her ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here of my son Paris' love, and bid her, mark me, on Wednesday next... But soft, what day is this? Uh, Monday, my lord. Monday. Ha <laughs> ha, well, Wednesday's too soon. Thursday, let it be. A Thursday, tell her, she shall be married to this noble earl. Will you be ready? Do you like this haste? We'll keep no great ado, a friend or two, for hark you, Tybalt being slain so late, it may be thought we held him carelessly, being our kinsman, if we revel much. Therefore we'll have some half a dozen friends, and there an end. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. <laughs> well, get you gone. A Thursday be it then. Go you to Juliet, ere you go to bed, prepare her wife against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord. Light to my chamber, ho. For me, it is so very, very late that we may call it early by and by. Good night. Wilt thou be gone? It is not yet near day. It was the nightingale, and not the lark, that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night's candles are burnt out, and jocund day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Yond light is not daylight, I know it. I. It is some meteor that the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torch bearer, and light thee on the way to Mantua. Therefore, stay yet. Thou needst not to be gone. Let me be tain, let me be put to death. I am content, so thou wilt have it so. I'll say yon gray is not the morning's eye. Tis but the pale reflex of Cynthia's brow. Nor that is not the lark whose notes do beat the vaulty heaven so high above our heads. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come, death, and welcome. Juliet wills it so. How is my soul? Let's talk. It is not day. It is. It is. Hi, hence. Be gone. Away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and unpleasing sharps. Some say the lark makes sweet division. This doth not so, for she divideth us. Some say the lark and loathed toad change eyes. 
Oh, now I would they had changed voices, too. Since arm from arm that voice doth us affray, Hunting thee hence with hunts up to the day. Oh, now be gone, more light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark our woes. Madam. Nurse. Your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke, be wary, look about. Then window let day in and let life out. Farewell, farewell, one kiss and I'll descend. Art thou gone so? My lord, my love, my friend. I must hear from thee every day in the hour, for in a minute there are many days. Oh, by this count I shall be much in years ere I again behold my Romeo. Farewell. I will omit no opportunity that may convey my greetings, love, to thee. Oh, thinkst thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not, and all these woes shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come. Oh, God, I have an ill-divining soul. Methinks I see thee, now thou art below as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails or thou look'st pale. And trust me, love, in my eyes so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Adieu, adieu. Oh, fortune, fortune! All men call thee fickle. If thou art fickle, what dost thou with him that is renowned for faith? Be fickle, fortune, for that I hope that will not keep him long, but send him back. Ho, oh, daughter, are you up? Who is it that calls? Is it my lady mother? Is she not down so late or up so early? What unaccustomed cause procures her hither? Why, how now, Julia? Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death? What, wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Therefore have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. Yet let me weep for such a feeling loss. So shall you feel the loss, but not the friend which you weep for. Feeling so the loss, I cannot choose but ever weep the friend. Well, girl, thou weepst not so much for his death as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. What villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. Villain and he be many miles asunder. God pardon him. I do, with all my heart, and yet no man like he doth grieve my heart. That is because the traitor murderer lives. Ay, madam, from the reach of these my hands would none but I might venge my cousin's death. We will have vengeance for it, fear thou not. Then weep no more. I'll send to one in Mantua, where that same banished runagate doth live, shall give him such an unaccustomed dram that he shall soon keep Tybalt company, and then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I never shall be satisfied with Romeo till I behold him. Dead. Is my poor heart so for a kinsman vexed? Madam, if you could find out but a man to bear a poison, I would temper it that Romeo should, upon receipt thereof, soon sleep in quiet. Oh, how my heart abhors to hear him named, and cannot come to him, to wreak the love I bore my cousin Tybalt upon his body that hath slaughtered him. Find thou the means, and I'll find such a man. But now I'll tell thee joyful tidings, girl. And joy comes well in such a needy time. What are they, I beseech your ladyship? Well, well, thou hast a careful father-child, one who to put thee from thy heaviness hath sorted out a sudden day of joy that thou expects not, nor I looked not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is that? Mary, my child, early next Thursday morn, the gallant, young, and noble gentleman, the county Paris, at St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Now by St. Peter's Church and Peter, too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed ere he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray you, tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet. And when I do, I swear it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate rather than... In Paris. These are news indeed. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself and see how he will take it at your hands. <laughs> when the sun sets, the air doth drizzle dew. But for the sunset of my brother's son, it rains downright. Oh, now, a conduit girl? What, still in tears? Evermore showering? In one little body thou counterfeit a bark, a sea, a wind? 
For still thy eyes, which I may call the sea, do ebb and flow with tears. The bark thy body is sailing in this salt flood, the winds thy sighs, who, raging with thy tears, and they with them, without a sudden calm, will overset the tempest-tossed body. How now, wife? Have you delivered to her our decree? Ay, sir, but she will none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. Soft, take me with you. Take me with you, wife. How? Will she none? Doth she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Does she not count her blessed, unworthy as she is, that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that has meant love. How now, how now, chump logic, what is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not, and yet not proud... Mistress Minion, you, thank me no thankings, no proud me no prouds, but fettle your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee in a hurdle thither. Out, you green sickness carrion! Out, you baggage! You tallow face! Fie, fie, what are you, mad? Good father, I beseech you on my knees. Hear me with patience but to speak a word. Hang thee, young baggage! Disobedient wretch, I tell thee what. Get thee to church a Thursday, or never have to look me in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. My fingers itch. Wife, we scarce thought us blessed that God had lent us but this only child. But now I see this one is one too much, and that we have a curse in having her out on her holding. God in heaven bless her. You are to blame, my lord, to rate her so. And why, my lady wisdom, hold your tongue, good prudence. Smack it with your gossips, go. I speak no treason. Oh, God, you good day. Day. not one speak. Peace, you mumbling fool. What are your gravity or a gossips, bull? For here we need it not. You are too hot. God spread, it makes me mad. Day, night, hour, time, tide, work, play, alone, in company, still my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, of fair domains, youthful and nobly trained, stuffed, as they say, with honorable parts, proportioned as one's heart would wish a man. And then... To have a wretched, puling fool, a whining mammoth, in her fortune standard to answer, Oh, not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you pardon me. But and you will not wed, I'll pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on it, I do not use to jest. Thursday is near, lay hand on heart, advise. And you be mine, I'll give you to my friend. And you be not, hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it, but think you, I'll not be forsworn. Is there no pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief? Oh, sweet my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month. A week, or if you do not, make the bridal bed in that dim monument where Tybalt lies. Talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. Oh, God! Oh, nurse! How shall this be prevented? My husband is on earth, my faith in heaven. How shall that faith return again to earth unless that husband send it me from heaven by leaving earth? Comfort me. Counsel me. Alack. Alack that heaven should practice stratagems upon so soft a subject as myself. What sayst thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Some comfort, nurse? Faith here tis. Romeo is banished. And all the world to nothing that he dares ne'er come back to challenge you. Or if he do, it needs must be by stealth. Then, since the case so stands as now it doth, I think it best you married with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a dishclout to him. An eagle, madam, hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris hath. Beshrew my very heart, I think you are happy in this second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead. Or twere as good he were, as living here and you no use of him. Speakest thou this from thy heart? 
and from my soul too, or else beshrew them both. Amen. What? Well, thou hast comforted me marvellous much. Go in, and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father to Lawrence's cell, to make confession and to be absolved. Mary, I will, and this is wisely done. Ancient damnation! O oh, most wicked fiend! Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn? or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue which he hath praised him with above compare so many thousand times? Go, counsellor. Thou and my bosom henceforth shall be twain. I'll to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die. Mm -hmm. 